everyone and welcome. We are with Billion Oyster Project for Submerge Festival this year. My name is Agata. I am the Outreach and Engagement Manager for the Billion Oyster Project. My name is Brianna and I'm the Field Stations Coordinator at Billion Oyster Project. And we are at Bush Terminal Piers Park Field Station in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. And today we're going to be looking at the organisms that we find inside our structures, um, as well as the organisms that we found while we were staining here. Lots of fish, lots of crabs, it's going to be a fun time. identify what we are looking at, we have our new resource. This is our species identification guide and it's for the New York Harbor, the New York Estuary, and it's actually made in support with the Department of Environmental Conservation for New York State, as well as HREP. One really cool feature about this book is that we have this image of our estuary and it's actually inspired by this site here. This guide is set up so that you have mobile creatures such as fish, and then we also have a section that features sessile organisms. So some of the other creatures that won't be moving around your cage, but you still might be incredibly curious about. These include anemones, mussels, uh, sponges, all of those creatures. So right now we're looking at a piece of sea lettuce. Uh, so this was attached to um, you know, the cages that we have below here. Um, you commonly find sea lettuce growing on pilings, uh, sometimes you find them on our cages, uh, sometimes we find them on our bigger nurseries and other structures, but they're most commonly found around intertidal zones, like the one that we're in here, uh, you know, salt marsh and things like that. But one of the other interesting things that we know about sea lettuce is that they can be commonly found in estuaries that are polluted and, you know, polluted waterways. Jellyfish generally are just super cool. This jellyfish um, is a comb jellyfish, sometimes called a warty, a warty jellyfish. The killifish, you can see they have these vertical or horizontal stripes. They're, you know, grouping up here in the corner and you can see they're just kind of swimming back and forth. The adult males will have vertical stripes, whereas the adult females will have horizontal stripes. You can see that the Atlantic silver sides are a little different, uh, but the killifish are super, super cute. They have this like almost snout shape. I think it's very distinct. They will actually also be able to switch them when they're juvenile. Over here, we have a grass shrimp. It's got this really like defined, you know, you can see almost transparent shape. It has this like very distinguished tail in comparison to a sand shrimp, and the colors are also very different. We also oh, have some tunicates growing on here as well. These are these like gelatinous guys here. So these right here, they're all different colors, um, but each of these is a golden star tunicate. So you'll see in this illustration, it's already growing on something. So we wanted to illustrate that these guys will always be attached to something or growing on, you know, rebar or maybe a sea squirt or maybe, you know, a blue mussel or in this case, we got oysters. The golden star tunicates, they grow in these clusters. They are filter feeders and they're kind of working together as a unit, even though they're just like this one, one big colony. So here, this yellowish orange, sort of like um, color on this oyster is actually a sponge. It's called the boring sponge, not because they're not exciting, but they actually bore into the shells of oysters. And so they are predators of oysters in a way because they can make the shell really weak and it gets to the point where the actual oyster shell begins to become really brittle and breaks super easily. We have a few different types of gobies here in New York Harbor. And the one that we're looking at, I'm pretty sure is a striped goby, is that right? Yeah, it's a striped goby. So what's really cool about these guys is that they have this 
like pelvic fin and a pelvic fin is something that's coming out of your abdomen if you imagine a fish right so like by my pinky that's where the pelvic fin is going to come out um, and it's modified so that means it's got this structure underneath it that can actually have roofing capacity so we find these on our reefs pretty frequently because they actually stick and whenever we're done learning about each of the critters in this tank for example we always put it back where it came from so we hope that this resource is going to be very helpful for your submerge or when you're out by your waterfront. You can check it out on our website.